Judd Trump was the target man. Karen Wilson craved his crown. Kurt Mafflin and Anthony McGill were chasing their biggest payday. Mark Williams has climbed the mountain before. So too, Ronnie O'Sullivan. The name of Neil Robertson is engraved on the coveted silverware, together with that of Mark Selby. And their England versus Australia battle is where we start our Day 12 Highlights package from the Betfred World Championship. What a fluke from Robertson, trying to fight back from nowhere. He rallied from 11-5 down against Martin Gould in 2010 and went on to capture the title. But for the thunder from down under, Robertson, Lightning 53. did not strike twice, as Selby set about clearing up in frame 20. 26. In the end, this black off its spot stood between Selby and securing a comfortable 13-7 victory to reach crucible semi-final number six. This season's English and Strange. Scottish Open Max. champion Max justifiably Selby. pleased with both his performance well, and being through to the last four. Just can't wait to get back out there now. It's going to be great. Obviously no fans, which is a shame, but uh, obviously it's still the semi-final of the World Championships, which is a great feeling. Trailing Carr and Wilson, 10-6, the crown of Judd Trump was slipping. One. But in this, Snooker's Game of Thrones, last year's King of the Crucible, didn't surrender without pride and precise potting as breaks of 72, 100 and 62 delayed Wilson's celebrations. After that daring attempt though, winter was coming. At least the title holder was about to be frozen out. You see Wilson crossed the line in fine style, reserving his best contribution of the match for last. A run of 104 to prevail 13-9 against his great rival. Wilson, Delighted to get the win there. Judd's been on a phenomenal run. Um, really held himself well as, as a world champion. Um, I knew I'd have my hands full and I knew he'd come sort of all guns blazing from 10-6 from down today. So um, delighted to hold him off in the end. Having powered into a 7-1 overnight lead, Anthony McGill was determined to keep Norway's Kurt Mafflin at bay. 67. But Lady Luck intervened on Mafflin's behalf in frame 15, even though he still ended the morning session 10-6 adrift. This, a candidate for fluke of the championship so far. 29. That quizzical expression spoke volumes. Mafflin stayed stubborn and rallied to within a couple of frames, Seven. but McGill held firm, playing a solid frame Five. under mounting pressure Five. to prevail 13-10 and proudly book his World Championship semi-final debut. When Ronnie O'Sullivan fell 7-2 in arrears against Mark Williams, the outlook was bleak, but the rocket then left the launch pad. A suddenly fluent O'Sullivan put together a pair of centuries in roaring back onto level terms at 8-8. This terrific red 99. opening the door to his 133 clearance in frame 22 and a 12-10 advantage. But on the verge of victory, O'Sullivan faltered. It went to a respotted black and the five-time world champion had first chance. What relief for O'Sullivan, a 13-10 winner and into a record equaling 12th Crucible semi-final. For me playing out there, there was obviously a lot of nervy moments. There were certain areas of the game that I was struggling with and was fighting, but you know, I, I tried to sort of find parts of my game that were okay and try to, you know, um, maximise all the opportunities when the, when them opportunities arise, you know. But um, yeah, it was it was tough. So there you have it. An Elite Eight has been distilled into a fabulous four. Three Englishmen and a Scot left standing in the Betfred World Championship, still in pursuit of a £500,000 first prize and snooker immortality. This year's Crucible semi-finals are to savour.